Good afternoon, everyone. It's Father Bob Gross here at Newman Hall. It's in the hour of mercy. Hope all of you are doing well today. Uh, it's been quite uh, a very busy day today. So, um, so today I want to get online here and speak with you because uh, today we had a, a funeral for Marie Monroe and we laid her to rest and uh, we're praying for the consolation of her family um, that they may know God's closeness. And it says in the bulletin uh, that uh, when we have a funeral, we do not have daily mass. Uh, so we have to follow that policy. Um, I lost track of that. So there will be no holy hour and daily mass at 545 tonight. We'll put a note up on the door, uh, which means uh, then that you guys will not have a, a, a homily or a reflection. So I thought I would give a little reflection for the gospel today. And then uh, maybe this can carry over for tomorrow. So um, it's kind of a crazy week. Uh, there's a lot to pray for. Uh, we have to pray for our fellow Iowans down in Cedar Rapids. It's still pretty bad down there uh, after the Del Recho, Lear De Recho, learning that new word. Also, um, our uh, our school at St. Teresa, they're getting ready for the opening of the school year next week. Along with our South Wind schools, they're getting ready to open up as well. Um, let's pray for parents. Um, pray for all these things that we're trying to figure out for the new year. Um, yeah, it's that moment of coming together, and, and it's just so different within this uh, COVID time. So if you can have that be your intention this week, it would be very very helpful. Um, and then also this week, uh, I just want to give an update. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have daily mass uh, at the usual time of um, 5.45 with uh, the rosary and adoration at 4.30. Uh, and then uh, August 20th, though, um, there will not be uh, uh, there will not be uh, yeah, maybe I can make it. Yeah. Um, Thursday, I have to be gone for a um, uh, a meeting uh, in, in Waverly uh, for all the faith formation leaders. The Archbishop is leading a, le a meeting. So uh, I don't think there'll be any Mass on uh, Thursday. Um, so there's that. And then Friday, uh, we'll have um, our normal morning Mass. Um and the teachers are going to be uh, with us, uh, which will be great. Uh, they'll be at 8.15 and then uh, 7 o'clock, holy hour. Okay, there's the housekeeping. Um, I want to read to you the gospel for today, and let's just kind of talk about it a little bit. Uh, today's gospel starts at verse 23 of chapter 19. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings this is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourselves sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father, or mother, or children, or lands, for the sake of my name, will receive a hundred times more, and will inherit eternal life. The many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I guess what I want to share with you today is, I'm very much touched by St. Peter. Um, he asks the question everyone else is thinking. So if it's hard to make it into the kingdom of heaven when you're rich, 
and we have given up everything to follow Jesus, as the apostles did, what will there be for us? And Jesus answers with, you will have the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that enough? And that's the beginning of serving the kingdom of heaven, is having more in the most unexpected ways. Those who give up father and mother and children and lands will receive a, a hundred times more. What does that mean? It's really Jesus saying, you know, you can't outdo God in generosity. Um, I'll give an example. Um, I've given my life over to the gospel. And I, I, I've experienced the hundredfold. I think about all the people that I have met because I am a priest. If I wanted to become a priest, the circle of my relationships would be that much smaller. Or I think about people that are generous to the Lord in their lives. And like yesterday, I was talking to a very good friend who was a Focus missionary. He's now has since left Focus and now he's working for a, a company and he has his children and all that, but how rich his layer of relationships are because of his experience of working for Focus for three years. That moment of generosity and, and we would not have met if I would not have become a priest and if he would not have joined Focus. So there's this sense that God will provide more than we can possibly imagine. And that's what Jesus is getting at. And that's why it's hard for those that focus on riches to enter the kingdom of heaven because they, they, they cut off their nose to spite their face in a sense. Um, if your goal is pleasure, honor, or riches, you're going to go into a much more narrow, narrower and shallower world. That's why Jesus is inviting us to a deeper life. That's why he says in Luke chapter 5, put out into the deep. Put out into the deep. Um, put out into the deep and start to tread water and then Jesus will save us and help us. We can only experience that if we put ourselves out into the deep water. If we stay in shallow waters, superficial desires, this world only concerns, we never leave the kiddie pool in a way. It's nice, the water is, but it doesn't totally invigorate us. That's why the gospel is going into the deep end of living. And that's what Jesus is encouraging his disciples to do, to to give up everything for God's call in our life. And then God will fulfill what we really need. Um, that's kind of the thought that kind of comes to mind. Just want to share that with you since we're not having mass tonight. And um, yeah, thanks for your patience. It's really uh, been a busy couple of weeks and now we're going up into school and Things are getting ramped up again. So, yeah, so let's uh, let's pray for one another. Uh, how about we end by saying the Hail Mary, and I hope you guys have a good evening, and we'll see you back at church tomorrow. Tomorrow, 4.30 Holy Hour, 5.45 Mass. Thursday, no Mass. Friday, 7 a.m. Holy Hour, 8.15 a.m. Mass. Woo. So let's do the Hail Mary and we'll conclude. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hope all of you enjoy the beautiful day.
God bless you.